Hello everybody, welcome to Colonial Lakers Coins. I am Kirk Parsons. And I'm Todd Sandham. We are the owners of Colonial Lakers Coins. We've been in business for over 25 years and we're here today to discuss some of the common do's and don'ts and questions that you guys have about coins and collecting. Uh, so the first question um, is a question that a lot of people ask when they come into our store, whether it be a, a beginner collector for sure or sometimes an avid, avid collector is, should I clean my coins or my paper money? And what do you, you know, I'm sure you know this question pretty straightforward. Yeah. We see this a lot, a lot of people inherit coins or they, they get a coin and it's dirty and the first thing they want to do is get out the silver polish or clean up their coin or if their banknote has some folds in it, they're going to get the ironing board out or somehow try to press their notes. Um, it's, you know, the first thing that they're going to be doing is right away taking value away from that item. Um, collectors, avid collectors, serious collectors, they want things all original, uh, not clean, not pressed. Um, keeping it uh, in its original state is important. Obviously, if something is very dirty, there is professional ways to restore items. Um, definitely leave it dirty, leave it natural. You're going to conserve your value in that item. So we got another question, Todd. A lot of people ask, how can I store my coins without damaging my coins, or how should I store them in my house so that they're safe from, from getting damaged? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, there's a lot of things out there that you could store your coins in that can actually damage your coins long term. Um, some of the easy ones is an elastic. Seems very simple, but uh, if you have silver coins and you put elastics around them, the elastic will actually leach into the coin and tone it up, and in some cases you can't get that toning off. Another way is old pages. If uh, probably, what, 20, 30 years ago, um, the pages that everybody used for coin supplies and all that, it wasn't quite right in such a way that the coins actually would turn green from the chemicals leaching out of the plastic. Uh, they've since basically generally fixed that. I haven't really found a page that does that anymore. Uh, but that green stuff getting on the coin, it's pretty pretty tough to get off. Um, so yeah, for the best ways to do it is if you go to a coin shop, they've got lots of great pages that you can buy that'll protect the coin so that you're not always handling the coin because handling the coin all the time, you're going to leave residue from your fingers on the coin. And long term, that could actually show up. Your fingerprint could actually show up on the coin, surprisingly enough. Or with paper money, you know, if you want to have a note that's brand, you say you got a brand new note right from the bank, you want it to be brand new. So you want to put it in a holder so you're not always, you know, folding it, touching it, and it, it's going to stay perfect, which will give you the long-term value you want. So another question that a lot of uh, collectors and, and people ask are, you know, I've had uh, this coin collection or I inherited this coin collection, and the, the coins are starting to turn green, or they just look like there's something wrong with them. What would you recommend that they do? So when people call in and say the coins are green, the first thing I tell them is remove your coins or your notes from the holder that they're currently in, um, as the holder is probably leaching out chemicals causing this reaction to happen. Uh, the second thing I tell them to do is to avoid trying to clean this green off right away, as they can probably do more damage than good trying to take the green off a coin. Uh, the best thing to do is consult a dealer. Uh, they, they can uh, assist you in deciding whether it's something that can be restored or unfortunately sometimes in some cases uh, it is irre irreversible. So at that point uh, you can decide what to do. But definitely you know, avoid cleaning your coin and, and go see a dealer right away. Alright, so a lot of questions we get is, I found some old coins, some pennies, some nickel dollars, some halves. Will the bank take these coins or what do I do with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big question. Like a, a lot of customers will come in with a collection for sale or something and when you go through the collection, part of that collection, you basically tell them, listen, it's not really have any collector value, it's just worth the spending value, take it to the bank. And when you have older coins such as uh, $1 coins from Canada from the 1970s and 80s which are called nickel dollars or the equivalent of the 50 cent pieces nickel halves, the banks will generally are supposed to take them but some banks will say no. But Usually it should work out pretty good. The other big one we always get since 2012, since the penny ended, is you know people come in with all their pennies to try and sell to us, thinking that they can't a spend them and b can't take them to the bank. Well, you can spend them. Of course, everybody says they don't really want them, and the bank will take them. So you know we generally just send them to the bank to get rid of those pennies. So we sort of talked about some places where a lot of customers go to find their values of the coins, which makes it tough because you don't know what condition your coin is compared to what the coin is you're looking at online. What are some better or, or other options that someone could do to figure out the value of their coins? So a more accurate, up-to-date research would be to use something like the Canadian Coin News or the Charlton uh, Coin 
Uh, these books are published yearly where they show values of coins, they show you all the different grade levels of coins uh, with corresponding values. Uh, these books also have detailed descriptions on how to grade coins and how you can determine if your coin falls into certain grade levels so you can determine the value uh, more accurately. Uh, so we'd strongly recommend if you don't have one of these books, many libraries have these books for your use or you come into a coin shop like us and you can sit down, we'll show you the books and we'll explain why your coin is worth from there. Alright, so a lot of people get confused when it comes to grading coins. Uh, some people see letters on coins for a grade, some people see numbers on a coin for grades. And they don't understand how they connect. Can you explain how this works? Yeah, so uh, basically the grading system, number one, just grading takes, for actual grading, it, it's, it's actually a very subjective thing. Um, once again, as you mentioned earlier, there's books that'll, like the Charlton book will give you in the front of the book, a grading idea of how to grade your coins and stuff like that and as well in that book and others other sources they'll actually describe how the grading and why there's letters and numbers basically in a nutshell uh, grading a coin you, you with the numbering system it, you could have it goes from 0 to 70 so basically a coin that's 0 which basically you wouldn't see yeah. but a coin at 0 is basically completely worn down to basically nothing all the details on the coin are basically gone the lowest you generally find might be a 3 or a 4 70 on the on the other end is 70 means that that coin is perfect all the when it was struck the coin everything on the coin is exactly the way it was when it was struck and it was struck in such a way that it was a perfect strike uh, generally you don't find 70s is the idea uh, especially in a business strike like uh, coins that come out in your in, in the rolls original rolls and stuff the highest you generally find on those might be 66 or 67 once in a blue moon a 68 um, so basically the grading system, like I said, goes from 0 to 70. So within that grading system, they attach letters or, or names to certain levels. So if you had the Charlton book, for example, or something else, there would be, it would start with like a G for good, very good, fine, very fine, extra fine, almost uncirculated, uncirculated, and brilliant uncirculated is basically all the different notations that everybody uses. And each of those names would have a number attached to it. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but for example, very good, which is a very common grade that a lot of things are found, especially in older coins. V or very good would represent the number eight. So eight out of 70, which doesn't seem like it's a very good coin because it's pretty low, but you actually have pretty well full date, full lettering. It's just the portrait on the back may, may, may be pretty worn down, but you can pretty well see the date and everything. So it's actually a pretty, pretty good collectible coin for an average collector sometimes. Uh, another interesting thing that happens when customers come in with a collection for sale, you know, they, we sit down with them and, and the first thing they do is they said, you know what, I went through my collection, I figured out that this is the oldest coin. You know, it might be an 1874 Canadian quarter and they're like, what's it worth? Because it's the oldest, it's got to be worth the most. But that's not always the case. A lot of people, uh, yeah, a lot of people think that the older a coin is, the more valuable the coin's going to be. Uh, there is no real direct correlation between age and value. Um, more the value of a coin is determined by its rarity. Uh, so you can take a coin, for example, Canada started producing pennies in 1858, which is a rare date. But the very second year was 1859. Um, you know, you take an 1859 penny, which is you know 100 and you know 150 years old and longer. And you can take a penny like 2006 P penny. Well, I'm going to pay more for that 2006 P penny than an 1859 penny, solely based on the rarity. So when it comes to coins and their age, yes, older coins tend to be worth a little more and a little more desirable in the collecting community, but it really comes down to how many they minted that year and how rare it is. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked our video. Is there anything else we can look forward to in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't forget to check out our website. We have lots of different monthly sales that we always run, whether it be unique sale, blowout sale, deals on decimal are probably the main three. And as always, we uh, have our auctions. Our two main auctions are always in the spring and fall. So we have our big premier auction happening in November. Yeah. And starting next year, we are moving our venues to the live, uh, we're going to do a spring live auction, which will be held in Mississauga. So don't miss that. And uh, as always, please like us on Facebook.